Sultan Selim's only son Suleiman came to Istanbul from Manisa upon the death of his father and ascended the throne on September 30th, 1520. A few days after his accession to the throne, letters were written to the governor of Egypt, Hayerbay, the Sheriff of Mecca, and the Khan of Crimea to inform them of his accession. The letters emphasized obedience and justice by pointing out that the rich, poor, urban and peasant people should obey him and that those who failed in their duties, whether they were rich or poor, should not be differentiated between each other. The son of Selim I, who became known to history as Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, set examples that he would pursue a policy of justice as soon as he became Sultan. In a short time, news of Sultan Suleiman's just actions spread to every corner of the country. Thus, he was nicknamed Kanuni among the people. During his accession to the throne, the governor of Damascus Jamir Ghazali, who wanted to take advantage of the new sultan's youth and inexperience, started a rebellion with the aim of establishing his own state in the region. In addition to the governorate of Damascus, he had control over a significant part of Syria, including the lands of Beirut and Tripoli. Jambir de Ghazali was a Slav captured by Akinjis in Rumelia during the reign of Bayezid II and was among the 20 captives presented to the Sultan of Egypt. He was freed by the Mamluk Sultan Meligeshref and became one of the most influential emirs during the reigns of Sultan Kansugavri and Tomambai. Jambir de Ghazali, who fought against the Turks as one of the most trusted emirs of the Mamluk Sultan in the battles of Merjidabek and Ridania, swore allegiance to Sultan Selim after the conquest of Egypt and was appointed governor of Damascus by Sultan Selim. Such was the history of Jambir de Ghazali, who rebelled against the Magnificent. When he raised the flag of rebellion against the Ottoman Empire, he took the title of Melgeshref and declared his own sovereignty. On the one hand, he endeavored to gather forces rapidly, and on the other hand, he wrote letters to the Safavid ruler Shah Ismail and the Egyptian governor Hayerbay, fearing that he would fail if he was left alone. In his letter to Hayerbay, he invited him to join forces with him. Hayerbay, on the other hand, wrote a very cunning reply, pointing out that he had to capture all of Syria in order to be successful, especially Aleppo, which was one of the most important locations. On the other hand, he sent Jambi de Ghazali's letter to Suleiman the Magnificent. Jambir de Ghazali marched on Aleppo with a force of 15,000 cavalry and 800 riflemen. The Baylor Bay of Aleppo, Karajapesha, took the base of Hama and Homs with him and put a fierce resistance, while the reprisal forces dispatched by Suleiman the Magnificent were on their way with great speed despite the winter season. Meanwhile, the governor of Egypt, Hayerbay, consulted the Sultan about whether he should send troops against Jambirdi. The Sultan gave a very accurate answer that there was no need for this and that the reprisal forces would be sent from Anatolia. In the meantime, while Jamir de Ghazali was besieging Aleppo, the third vizier Ferhat Pasha, who had been appointed as the commander of the reprisal forces, mobilized with 4,000 janissaries and an equal number of forces from the fifth Sipahis of the provinces of Karaman and Sivas were united under his command. In addition, the Dulkadir Bey Sheikh Suvarul Ali Bey was also assigned to help Ferhat Pasha. Not waiting for Ferhat Pasha to arrive, Sheikh Suvarola Ali Bey arrived at the battlefield earlier due to his proximity to Aleppo. With the Dulkadili forces under his command, he attacked Jamir Ghazali and forced him to lift the siege of Aleppo and retreat to Damascus. While Jamir Ghazali was retreating towards Damascus, Ferhat Pasha, the commander of the repulse forces, had reached Aleppo. Thus, the troops of Sheikh Suvarullah Ali Bey and Koraj Ahmed Pasha, who were gathered under the command of the third vizier Ferhat Pasha, advanced on the forces of Jamir de Ghazali. Jamir de Ghazali went out of the city to meet the reprisal forces coming against him. The two armies came face to face on the outskirts of Damascus. 
In the battle that took place here, Jamiri Ghazali suffered a terrible defeat. Captured by the Ottoman soldiers, Jamiri Ghazali was beheaded and his head was sent to the Sultan. Thus, this rebellion which went down in history as the Jamiri Ghazali Rebellion was suppressed in a short time. Upon this, Suleiman the Magnificent appointed Anatolian Bayler Bayas Pasha to the governorship of Damascus. He also assigned Ferhat Pasha to wait around Kayseri because Shah Ismail had gathered troops on the frontier to act according to the course of the Jamiri Ghazali Rebellion. Ferhat Pasha, who was observing the Iranian site from the vicinity of Kayseri, was to wait there with his army until he was sure of the situation. In the meantime, ambassadors were sent to countries to announce the accession of Suleiman the Magnificent. The Turkish envoy sent to the Hungarian king Behram Chavush, one of the surgeons of the Imperial Council, was killed by the Hungarian king. The Hungarians were provoking the Ottoman Empire for the second time. During the reign of Sultan Selim, the Ottoman Empire had not yet accelerated the pace of conquest in Europe due to its preoccupation with the Eastern campaigns. On the contrary, this pace had reached its highest point. In the face of the great power of the Turks, the task of the Hungarians was to avoid actions that would lead to war as much as possible. However, the Hungarians themselves chose war instead of peace. The new sultan could not remain silent against this second provocation of the Hungarians. The Ottoman Empire declared war against Hungary. When the campaign against the Hungarians was decided, the gathering of forces started immediately. Ahmed Pasha, the Bayerbe of Rumelia, set off from Istanbul and went to Ipsala. Ferhat Pasha in Kayseri was ordered to move to Rumelia. An Ottoman fleet of 50 ships under the command of Danish Mandroys was dispatched from the Black Sea to the Danube. In addition, the Sanjak based in the Danube and Sava regions were ordered to prepare 400 horse boats. Thus, everything was done in perfect order for the Sultan's expedition. Suleiman the Magnificent, who embarked on a campaign against the Hungarians, set out from Istanbul after first visiting the tombs of his father and then his ancestors. On May the 27th, 1521, he arrived in Edirne. Madrasa students in Edirne voluntarily joined the Sultan's army. The students of Plovdiv and Sofia Madrasas would also join the army voluntarily. Upon arriving in Plovdiv, a council was established and the plan of action was discussed. The Sultan was influenced by two ideas discussed in the council. The first of these ideas was to capture only the city of Belgrade and its vicinity with this operation and the second was to enter Hungary directly and capture the Hungarian capital and all of its lands. The idea of capturing Belgrade was defended by the Grand Vizier Piri Mehmed Pasha and the other idea was defended by his rival Ahmed Pasha, the Bayerbe of Rumelia. The Grand Vizier pointed out that Belgrade was the gateway to Hungary and that it would be dangerous to march to Hungary without conquering it. For this reason, he wanted to urge the Sultan towards a planned conquest. Ahmed Pasha, whose name would later be known as the traitor on the other hand, took advantage of the Sultan's inexperience and tried to encourage the Magnificent to a more brilliant campaign, such as the conquest of Hungary. In the end, the Sultan accepted Piri Mehmed Pasha's idea and decided to lay siege to Belgrade. Belgrade, which was located in a very important position as the gateway to Hungary, was originally a Serbian city, but it had been left to the Hungarians by the Serbian despot Brankovic, who realized that he could not defend it against the Turks. Until the time of the Magnificent, Belgrade was besieged twice by the Turks. The first siege was in 1441 during the reign of Murad II and the second in 1456 during the reign of Muhammad the Conqueror. Although great efforts were made in both sieges, the conquest was not realized. 
However, in the intervening 65 years, the Ottoman Empire had grown stronger and had long since recovered from its previous failures. This campaign was a special one, as it was the first campaign in which Suleiman the Magnificent participated. European states would see the power of the new Ottoman Sultan for the first time. While the Ottoman army under the command of Suleiman the Magnificent was marching towards Belgrade through Edirne, Plovdiv, Sofia and Nish with great order, the Sultan sent forces ahead of him under the command of some commanders. Bosnian Bey Yahya Pashazadeh was assigned to raid Croatia and Mihalul Mehmet Bey was assigned to raid Transylvania. Before reaching Nish, Husrev Bey, the Bay of Samandre, was assigned to blockade the city of Belgrade. While the Sultan marched to the Sabaj castle with his main army, the Grand Vizier Piri Mehmed Pasha marched to Belgrade with his Sipahis, Azabs and a thousand Janissaries under his command. The castle of Sabaj had changed hands between the Turks and Hungarians several times before. Its walls were strong and its fortifications sturdy. But despite the fierce resistance of the defenders, the castle could not withstand the Turkish army's formidable onslaught. On July 7, 1521, Sabaj was captured by the Turks. This was the first castle conquered by Suleiman the Magnificent. The city was immediately fortified and reconstructed. In the meantime, news were received that the Grand Vizier Piri Mehmed Pasha had also conquered the castle of Zemlin. The fortress of Zemlin, located opposite Belgrade, had fallen with his surf based artillery bombardments. Meanwhile, Suleiman the Magnificent arrived in front of Belgrade with his army on August 1, 1521. With the arrival of the Sultan, the blockade of Belgrade was turned into a siege. Grand Vizier Piri Mehmed Pasha commanded the Sava River front south of the city, while Ahmed Pasha, the Baylor Bay of Rumelia, commanded the Danube site. Some of Ahmed Pasha's troops also landed on the island of Vojna Ostarova to the north of the city. The siege began with fierce cannon fire from all sides. Thanks to the rifled cannons, a marvelous discovery of Ottoman engineering, huge breaches were made in the strong walls of Belgrade. With the order given, the Turkish soldiers quickly advanced to the walls. A lot of breaches had been made in the walls. The castle defenders, consisting of Hungarian, Serbian and Bulgarian soldiers, did not know which breaches to hold. In a short time, the Turkish army broke through the walls and entered the city of Belgrade. Unable to resist for long, the castle defenders retreated to the inner castle. The bombardment continued unceasingly until the citadel was captured. Finally, when the enemy's resistance was broken, they handed over the keys of Belgrade's inner fortress to the Ottomans. Thus, the city of Belgrade, which could not be captured for 80 years, was conquered by Suleiman the Magnificent in a very short time. Since the day Suleiman the Magnificent entered the city coincided with Friday, Belgrade's largest church was immediately converted into a mosque. The Sultan and the army performed the Friday prayer here. Those of the Christian inhabitants of Belgrade who wanted to go to Hungary were allowed to do so. Those who accepted Jizya were left in their places. Some of the rest of the people migrated to Istanbul. In Feridun Bey's Belgrade Rusname, he records that those who migrated to Istanbul were Serbs. These Serbs founded the village of Belgrade on the Bükdere in today's Bosporus. The Belgrade forest near the village also got its name on this occasion. Before leaving Belgrade, Suleiman the Magnificent allocated 20,000 gold coins from the treasury for the repair of the castle and fortifications of the city and ordered the construction of buildings such as mosques, masjids and almshouses. Yahya Pashazade Bali Bey, the Sanjak Bey of Bosnia, was appointed as the guard of Belgrade along with Semendre worth 900,000 silver. Due to the importance of Belgrade, 3,000 Janissaries were located to Bali Bey's command. In addition, Belgrade fortifications were fortified with 200 cannons. 
Thus, the conquest of Belgrade opened the door to Hungary for the Ottomans. Thereafter, the city of Belgrade began to be used as a base for the campaigns against Hungary and Austria. In this respect, Belgrade was referred to as Darul Jihad in the old Ottoman sources.